Welcome to LNP Renewable System Center. Today we are going to discuss some of the basics of access control system part 2. So if you have missed part 1, okay, please subscribe to our channel. In our channel we will be creating basics of access control system part 1 to 5 so that whatever thing that you have missed in the part 1 by accessing our playlist you can listen to that part 1 also. Okay. So what are the things that we are going to discuss today in part 2? Most importantly, today uh, in the part 1 we have discussed so many things in general and in the part 2 we are going to discuss about the basic controllers, access controllers of Hikvision brand. Okay. And most importantly, how can we wire okay, 4 door access controllers in Hikvision, single door access controllers and 2 doors access controllers in Hikvision. Apart from it, okay, how hardware installation is done in Hikvision, okay, how to do NO and NC settings of relays in Hikvision by simply changing the jumpers and how to do the dip switch setting changes for the card readers and others and how to activate the control panel in Hikvision. So as you can see here, this is today we are going to discuss about the wiring of the 4 door access controller. How comes it is 4 door? As you can see here, we can connect 4 card readers, card reader 1, 2, 3 and 4. So this is going to be the reader 1, 2, 3, 4 provisions. As you can see here, from the card reader, we, we, we can able to connect with the ground, okay, W0, W1, buzzer, error and OK symbols. Okay. Next thing is that for this uh, reader to work properly, okay, we need a power supply. So for that one, we have a reader power supply. So this reader power supply will be 12 volt. So we need to connect. Okay. Say for example, you can have a SMBS. Okay. Maybe it might be operating with a 230 volt AC supply. So it will convert that 232 12 volt. Okay. So the 12 volt main connection you can connect it here and uh, this ground connection you can connect it here. So it means uh, if the card reader has to work you need to provide power supply here. Next thing is that okay we might be having okay we might be having some of the uh, door contacts. So we might be having what we might be having some of the door can door contacts. So if you want to command this uh, door contacts okay what we need to do we need a help of a relays so these are going to be the relays okay these are going to be the relays for this okay lock most importantly we also have the locks also lock power uh, supply also we need to provide lock command also we're going to provide these are going to be your outputs so if you want to command uh, this door lock or if the uh, for the lock to operate it needs a power supply this is going to be the lock power supply so for here also we need to connect a 12 volt supply either you can take a tap from here you can connect it here okay 12 volt supply you can provide so this is one of the most important power wiring connections uh, and also uh, this is how you, you need to connect your output signals next thing is that um, now we have provided the normal power supply normal power supply now consider a scenario if this uh, power supply is getting failed in such occasions the system has to work properly so for that one what we need to do we need to provide a battery supply so for that you can use okay you can use 12 volt battery so from the battery you can connect your positive uh, negative terminals and in the positive terminals here so that even this main supply fails with the help of a battery this equipment will be operating because we can see a scenario that if uh, the main power fails it does we can't say we can't enter into the building or we can come out of the building we need to come out or we need to enter also so it should work 24 hours so in such occasions we need the support of those batteries okay and also next most important thing is that if any theft is happening okay if any theft is happening or uh, if some person is illegally okay, illegally accessing them in such occasions we need to raise the alarms so for that we need to trigger some alarm relays okay for the alarms to work properly we need to provide external 12 volt supply for those relays to operate properly okay and most importantly as we told earlier uh, if it is a very small application 
maybe with the one or two court readers we will be working and they will be monitored separately but when you are going for a very, very big projects or a multi storage building projects okay uh, multi store projects or uh, metro stations in such occasions okay so many card readers will be there we can't individually uh, provide our wire, wire from the controller to that location say for example um, maybe consider a floor you might be having uh, 10 floors so in such occasions so individually from a single place we can't pull the wire to all the locations separately so to avoid that what we can do we can provide a rs 4 ETF communications since in rs 4 ETF communication maybe the main uh, controller will act as a master and others will act as a slave we can establish the looping connection for that looping connection for positive and negative looping we need to connect it here so most importantly even though this is going to be a master okay for this to communicate with the server we need a help of this rs485 and for this to communicate with the other slave card reader or uh, other slave controller we need the help of this rs485 communication and most importantly uh, even though access controllers okay are working based on the card reader inputs or emergency push buttons everything fire plays a very important role so consider the situation there occurs a fire all these outputs has to be unlocked immediately most importantly this uh, locks and this door contacts has to be demagnetized immediately so that uh, uh, the persons can exit the doors and go outside to the uh, emergency um, emergency locations so uh, it means uh, as a, in a single controller so many provisions so many options are available okay and as we told earlier um, even if you want to um, change this uh, output okay uh, say for example this output uh, if you want to do some uh, uh, changing of uh, no provision or uh, nc contacts those things if you want to change with the help of a uh, dip switch settings or with the help of a uh, jumpers we can change it so those things we will see separately so as you can see here this is the wiring of a two way access controller as you can see here so our card readers card reader 1 and uh, card reader 2 so this we, we will be connecting here so we will we are having 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 eight wires so consider a uh, uh, select a wire which has a uh, 10 wires in it so that eight you can use it two you can keep as a spare if any other wires are failing in such occasion you can use the other two wires so always never choose exact wires okay so as we told earlier for this card reader to work properly we need a power supply of 12 volt so we have smbs this is 230 volt so it is converting uh, the positive supply we are connecting to 12 volt and negative supply we are connecting to ground okay so for the card reader to work we need to provide the supply in the same way for the output okay most importantly if you want your door contact to work properly okay you need a alarm power a lock power so means in the same way you need to tap and provide positive and negative supplies for the door locks to work properly so as we told earlier even if this power fails okay it need to operate so in such occasions what shall we do we can provide okay and we can provide a uh, battery okay which has a positive and negative supply which is having a basic supply of 12 volt you can connect uh, the uh, positives here okay and you can connect your negative here okay so and as we told earlier even though we are providing so many provisions most importantly for this controller to work properly we need a it needs a 12 volt supply so this that connection you need to connect it here so as we told earlier okay uh, for the alarms in order to trigger the alarms okay Uh, if any alarm uh, is working or anything is happening we need to have a indication right so we will have a leds also and this is going to be the alarm inputs and as you can see here these are going to be the alarm outputs maybe it might be going through some of the buzzers okay if any malfunctioning or any theft is happening immediately the buzzer will start creating the alarm okay and uh, in order to change the no and the nc provisions either with the help of this jumpers you can change it in the door contacts or if you want 
the same provisions to be changed here you can use NONC provisions See, even for the alarm outputs also if you want to change the NONC provisions using by changing the jumpers also we can do so we can we have the LED indications for all the healthy status say for example if the communication is healthy we can see here with the help of the LED okay and if the battery uh, charging is there then we can see with the uh, LED provision and if it is running properly we have a separate LED to show the running status and if uh, the network is est got established properly so if we, if we are receiving some uh, sending and receiving some data those things also we can see with the network provisions next this is the wiring of a three do uh, two door access controller as you can see here using this we can control the two doors okay so we have four card readers here okay and we have a 12 volt supply for the provision so either from the smbs so this is going to be the 230 volt and your output is going to be the 12 volt so for this controller to operate you need a 12 volt power supply and in the same way for this card reader to operate card readers to operate it needs a 12 volt power supply you can connect it here and even for uh, commanding the output for the door contacts for to provide power for the law we, we can connect the 12 volt supply here so and most importantly uh, these are going to be the alarm inputs and these are going to be the alarm outputs it might be say some sound alarms okay buzzers those things will be there and for the communication purpose okay for the readers you can use this rs485 communications next to hardware installation how can we do this hardware installation so hardware installation we can do in two different way the first method is that remove the jumper from the normal okay normal terminal disconnect the power okay disconnect the power and restart the access controller so that uh, uh, buzzer beeps for a long okay it gives a long beep sound when the beep stopped plug back the jumper back to the normal and disconnect the power and restart the access controller so that it is a basic way of hardware insulation this is one of the choice what is the other way so in the other way what shall we do you can remove the jumper from here and put the jumpers in the initial portion and disconnect the power and reboot the access controller okay so the controller buzzer beeps for a long time once it is done when the beep stop put back the jumper back to the normal position itself and disconnect the power and reboot the access control so that the hardware get initiated and most importantly so in order to control command the outputs we need the help of a relay so in, we all know that in relay we have common okay normally open common normally close provisions so what provision you, you are going to use there maybe you might have only two terminals in it you don't know which is going to be the NO and which is going to be the NC so for in order to have that clarity what shall we do if you want to operate in the normally open status have uh, for the relay 1, 2, 3 and 4 please keep your jumper portions in 1 and 2 so jumper portion should be in 1 and 2 or if you had a plan to use your relays as a normally close what, sh what shall we use keep your jump remove the jumpers from 1 and 2 and uh, put the jumpers in 2 and 3 terminals so that uh, you, all the four relays will act as a normally closed and dip switch settings so what is the purpose of this dip switch settings so as we told earlier okay uh, maybe uh, using the dip switch setting itself uh, you know uh, four different card readers you can connect okay consider situation we have four different card readers this is going to be the master this is slave one this is slave two and this is slave three card reader so this if this is going to be the first door or the first switch and if you want to assign the address as a one here what you can do you can enable the switch one so that the address one get assigned here this is going to be the door one and in the same way if you want to do for the others you can change the dip switch settings two three four like that you can keep this is one of the method or if you're going for a vegan card readers okay um, you want to set the bit six of the card reader okay dip switch on and bit seven is on so it means uh, it is going to work on the uh, vegan protocol it means if the setting b7 is off on which refers to the vegan 26 protocol or if if you make this uh, dip switch 7 off 
it refers to the vegan 34 protocol okay next thing is that um, so we ha we have uh, 8 bit bit switches in it okay 1 to number 8 okay by changing the lower bit to higher bit we can change the dip switches okay so it means that uh, when the switch is turned on it makes the switch is enabled otherwise switch is off that is a that is the most important thing that you need to consider see here as you can see here only uh, 3 4 is at the different portion rest and all in the off portion it means uh, everything is zero only these two will be on and the other is zero this is how the binary value of the decimal 12 and most importantly the seventh most important step is the activation so you can activate in different method either by accessing through the IP address default IP address by using the username and the port address you can enter and uh, you can keep the settings you can change the settings or in other way okay what shall we do you can activate using the client software or you can using uh, activate using the SAT SADP tools okay so if you get into the softwares you have a separate provision by getting into the devices getting into the online uh, online devices you can uh, activate them okay and you can create a password for yourself and you can also activate the devices this is one of the methods so and in depth if you get into the softwares that is a separate topic we will discuss in our future discussions thank you so much please subscribe and press the bell icon if you want to know more and learn more you can contact us we can provide the contact details here we lnp renewable system integrator we are providing plc programming training for siemens allen broad in delta plcs and if you had a plan to work in gcc countries especially qatar oman saudi dubai especially in uh, building automation system or building management system for uh, airport project okay metro project and most importantly uh, for a multi storage buildings okay you can contact us we can provide training in building automation system and building management system and most importantly if you want to know the access control basics you can contact us we are also providing basic trainings for access control systems also and most importantly uh, we lnp renewables we are providing uh, solar fencing as a kit you, you might have an agriculture phone if you want to protect your crops from the wild animals uh, intrusion instead of going for normal fencing you can use a solar electrical fences we are providing them as a kit and we are, we lnp renewables we are providing solar street lights as a product also if you have any sort of requirements you can contact us along with the pole we can able to supply and most importantly for solar on grid off grid hybrid application and solar pump services we are providing design consultancy and training supports also and if you want to establish a pure dc light systems using a solar for your homes or factories where the ev power is not available we can able to sub support you thank you so much